Hi everyone, Mikey Bly here, and today uh, we're back with Red Handed Robin. Where um, Ren's got me a wee bit perplexed. I'm like, are you a real detective? Are you just another sneaky thief pretend to be a detective? Uh, 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 what's the deal here? What What's the big game? Um, friend. I don't trust him. Don't trust anybody in this game, actually. I don't even trust the characters that we play, and I guess I shouldn't because they're thieves. Downright dirty damn thieves is all they are. You know, they're kind of fun and adorable, though, so they've got that going for them. Um, yes, but anyway, um, this is when we left it last time. We were just, remember, saying, oh, well, you know, if I don't catch these thieves, then maybe they deserve to get away with it. Um, and as he follows up with, no one commits a crime without reason. If they're able to beat me in my own game, maybe they were in the right after all. That's not very... Moral detective. Yeah, I know. That's immediate what makes me even more suspicious of him. I don't think any genuine detective would be of that opinion. No, but it's fair, wouldn't you say? The question was posed to the group at large, but Ren's eyes were on me alone. Yeah, he knows. Um, He's prying for information and seeing what kind of reactions I have. Um, well, that's not justice. Let's just put, agree with the rest of the group, see what he says. If this was some kind of trap, I wasn't going to fall for it. Rules exist for a reason, detective. They're there to protect us. If you're saying that anyone should be able to do as they please, so long as they can get away with it, I'd have to say that's not justice. Smirking, Ren leaned forward and made a show of carefully considering my words. Is that so? I'll remember that when I'm throwing the cuffs on you later. Uh, huh, huh. Well, I agree with Robin. If you ask me, I'd say you're rather depraved yourself, detective. I suppose you're right. Though I never claimed to be completely innocent. He didn't, but... What kind of detective that that be badger? What kind of detective does that make him? Ren laughed, and when he spoke again, he was back to his congenial self. One opinion in a group. I'm glad I decided not to turn in early after all. That was a wonderfully melodramatic detective, but what does it have to do with you being on the train? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of. This is this was my big question. He would only be on the train if he suspects that the suspect is also on the train. Which again makes me think he knows exactly who the thieves are in this scenario. Alright! <laughs> the most important part. According to those close to him, Mr. Sullivan was in possession of a whirlwind express ticket. That's who we stole it from, that explains the blood. I'm such an idiot. I'm such an idiot. That makes so much more sense now. W wasn't Ren close by when we were being quiz quizzed about the blood on the ticket as well? He could be ten steps ahead of us and we don't even know. Apparently he was planning on transporting some pieces of his personal jewellery collection to Gales. Possibly to sell. When we couldn't find either the ticket or the intended pieces when we investigated his home. Right. So now he knows that somebody on this train is the responsible party. Well, wellity, wellity, well. And that's obviously got Jizz's uh, paranoia riled up a little bit. And Robin's too, which makes sense. Jay and I shared the slightest of glances. How do they know about the jewels? If that's true, then I should think it would be very easy to find the culprit. You could simply check the passenger list against the current passengers, and whoever is out of place is the murderer. Are their names tied to the tickets, though? If there are, this would make for a very short investigation. That would be a brilliant idea. Except there is no such list. The train's benefactor made it so that passengers are able to remain anonymous. I mean, not few. I mean, sorry, Ren, I was just, I'm, I'm warm is all. Yeah, that's all it is. 
I suppose he wanted to protect the privacy of his patrons. Perhaps you could search each passenger's luggage for the missing jewellery pieces. If only we could. It would be violating Zafiri privacy laws to do so without just cause. However, if someone were especially suspicious, say I kept catching them in lies, I have the authority to search them then. We really need to keep our stories on the level. This is why I was trying to desperately not spin a million different stories earlier on. And I am so glad I stuck to my guns on that one. So that's how it is. It sounds like you have your work cut out for you then, Detective. I can't believe this theory. Police are played by so much red tape. <laughs> Many of my colleagues would agree with you. But personally, I don't mind. All games have their own rules. Anyway, I hope you ladies, Lou, I hope you ladies will stay safe. Please try not to associate with anyone who seems particularly suspicious. As he glanced around the room, his eyes lingered for just a second too long on Jay. I oh, know Jay's our liability factor here, isn't he? Um. Quickly breaking eye contact, Ren stood up and stretched. Uh, and now, I'm afraid I've socialised after death. I think I'll turn in for the night. He turned to me and gave a nervous smile. Ah, uh, starting such a dark conversation right after meeting. I must have scared you ladies. I hope we can still be friends. Oh yeah, you don't scare me. Bring it on. No, we can be friends. I stood as well. Now that I was so close to him, it was obvious how much he had grown since I'd last seen him. Have you always been this handsome? Perhaps I wasn't old enough to notice before. All right, all right, all right, all right. Chill, chill it, chill it, chill it a little bit. Sleeping with the enemy never ends well. I offered him my hand, which he gladly took. We never stopped being friends, detective. For a moment, he looked genuinely overjoyed, and his grip on my hand tightened ever so slightly. I'm happy to hear you say that. You know, Detective, I'm quite fond of games myself. Here we go. Here we go. She's going to turn it into a game now. She's going to see if he can catch her out. She's going to maybe drop little hints here and there. This isn't a good idea, Robin. I'm not on board with this one. Is that so? Mm-hmm. I nodded and leaned in close, whispering in his ear. And I don't like to lose either. My breath tickled his neck, causing him to shiver. Is this still whispering? Or do we back out again now? Maybe if you're feeling stuck, the two of us could discuss this puzzle of yours together. Two heads are better than one, as they say. P perhaps I'll take you up on that. Good night, Ren. Good night, Robin. Oh my, we totally know each other. We totally know we're both lying about who we are. I let go of his hand and headed for the door. Jay followed closely behind me. Yikes. Oh, the tension. The tension, the general tension and the, 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 the naughty tension is, is, is high, isn't it? When we were finally out of the car, I gasped for breath. My entire body was buzzing with electricity. Yeah, yeah, she likes the rush. I think she kind of, she's one of those people who wouldn't mind being caught. A fucking detective? What are we going to do? Not here, we're in the cabin. Jay, <laughs> keep a lid on it, man. Should have locked you in there. I tried to walk, but it was as though my legs weren't listening. I stumbled and Jay quickly caught me by the arm. Careful, you idiot. He must have been worried because his name calling lacked its usual bite. Yeah, idiot's a little bit, it's a little bit low, isn't it? That's not highbrow insults, that. He put his arm around my shoulder and helped support my weight as we quickly headed back to the cabin. Was she drinking? Or was this purely just the adrenaline rush? 
We walked in silence, but my mind was swarming with thoughts. So it's a game you want. Well, allow me to oblige. But I hope you remember, Ren, that I have never once lost to you. Hmm. Intriguing. Oh. Cheek pressed against the cold, hard floor. A young boy felt his mouth filling with blood. This must be a flashback. Oh. I'll ask you again, and I won't tolerate any more of your foul lies. The stern man wiped the blood from his hand with a handkerchief. One of his rings had split the boy's lip when he struck him. How is it that my pocket watch came to be in your room? The boy picked himself off the floor and tried to stop the bleeding with his sleeve. He wasn't lying, but Mr. Gardner refused to see reason when it came to his precious daughter. I already told you, Rosalind gave it to me. We were playing a game and... Mr. Gardner struck him again. Wow. We were real mean, weren't we? Did we drop him in it or did we accidentally drop him in it? But we just said we never lost to him. So do we used to keep getting him fudged over like this? That's terrible. Ridiculous. I accept you into my home and this is how you act? Accusing my own daughter of stealing from me? If, if you just ask her yourself... He braced himself for another reprimand, but Mr. Gardner thankfully held his temper. Do you think I'm a fool, boy? I'm sure she'll tell me much the same. Heaven knows why, but my daughter is fond of you. No doubt she'd go along with this story of yours if she thought it would protect you. The boy wondered if that were true. Lying was one of Rosalind's favorite pastimes. And if it got him into trouble, even better. Wow! I like, I like our protagonist a lot less all of a sudden. Mr. Gardner didn't know that, of course. In fact, he barely knew his daughter at all. To him, she was just another part of his collection. Something he could put on display for others to marvel at. Never allowed to leave the pedestal he'd placed her on. But she wasn't just some doll to the boy. She was quick-witted and clever. When they played games, she would boast when she won and cry when she lost. She just said she never lost. Was she lying? Did she forget? Is he imagining that he won something? She claimed they were enemies. But when he got sick, the maids couldn't keep her from sneaking into his room to keep him company. It's kind of cute in a way, but he's getting the snot kicked out of him here. Uh, and that's, I mean, this guy seems like a jerk anyway. I mean, who hits a kid? What a prick. The boy was in love with her. This watch is a family heirloom. It's extremely old and extremely valuable. Just like I am also one of those things. Rosalind knows she's not allowed to play with such things. And why on earth would she give it to you of all people? She said... The boy hesitated. He doubted Mr. Gardner would like the answer. Would it get her into trouble? She said she's supposed to give it to the man she's going to marry. Mr. Gardner gave a harsh laugh. <laughs> and you believed her? My daughter? Marry some orphan kitchen boy? Preposterous. Now that he thought about it, of course it wasn't true. This was just another one of her little games. Was it, though? Maybe she genuinely did kind of like him. She seems to now, back in present times. The boy's heart sank. He should have known. She never acted that sweet unless she was up to something. She probably intended for a maid to find it in his room so she could frame him for taking it. How stupid could he be? Incredibly, apparently. I guess you win again, Robin Hood. Oh, is that another little... Where that name came from? I know it's birds is the reference here, but uh, that's another little hint. Mr. Gardner strode to one of the display cases that lined the walls of his study and placed the pocket watch back on its dusty cushion. 
He spoke with his back to the boy as he gazed over the various treasures in the case. Go collect your things. I'll have one of the others see you out. What? What? You heard me. I sheltered you in your time of need, and you've done nothing but spit in my face. You are no longer welcome here. Wait, Mr. Gardner, I... He was 13 years old. Who would want to take him in? So he's three years older than Robin. Rosalind. His payment for his time serving the gardeners had been room and board, so he had no savings either. Did Mr. Gardner really intend to put him on the streets? Where am I supposed to go? It doesn't matter to me so long as it's not here. Wow. This scene just gets heavier and heavier, doesn't it? The boy grasped for something to say, but he knew there was nothing that would change Mr. Gardner's mind. He gathered himself up and silently made for the door. And Warren, Warren, Wren, Warren, Wren, he didn't try very hard, did he, with his fake name? He just took a couple of letters out of it. Don't even think about trying to say goodbye to my daughter. I won't have you upsetting her. You brought this on yourself. The boy felt a knot forming in his throat. Did that mean he would never get to see her again? <laughs> Maybe that was for the best. He wasn't rich or strong or good looking. He used to think he was, at the very least, smart. But somehow Rosalind always got the better of him anyway. So that couldn't be true either. He had nothing to offer her. She didn't need him. If anything, he must have been a terrible influence on her. After all, he was the one playing along with her schemes. Maybe in his absence she would grow into a proper young lady. That's what was best for her. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> of course. Because everybody who grows up in a big fancy posh family wants to be exactly the same as the rest of them. Tears were welling in his eyes and obscuring his vision. He nodded obediently and left before Mr. Gardner could see him cry. In one of the Whirlwind's passenger cabins, Detective Wren woke from a restless dream. Ever since he was a child, this particular memory had always plagued him, and tonight was no different. What I wouldn't give to have a nice dream for once. As he lay there recounting the day's events, a surge of nervous energy gripped him. The torrent of emotions he'd been trying to keep in check since he saw her on the platform was threatening to boil over now that he was alone. Of course, now would be the time she decided to come back into my life, using that silly nickname and everything. Ren wondered if she'd given her new friend his name too. I really am a fool. All those years apart, yet here we are playing the same game as always. He didn't have a choice. There was too much at stake. A chill ran down his back and, despite the pressure he was under, he felt himself grinning in the darkness. Sorry, Robin. I'll be the one winning this time. His thoughts were interrupted by a knock at the door. Ren sat up and checked the time on an old pocket watch on the bedside table. It was nearly three in the morning. For half a heartbeat as he made his way to the door, he hoped it was Robin knocking. If that happened, I don't know if I could keep myself from kissing her. She'd probably kick you in the nuts, but you could go for it. Well, maybe she wouldn't. I don't know. I think she'd be kind of torn. Ren wondered if she would let him. If she did, if she smiled at him and with those eyes full of mischief and let him wrap his arms around her. He wasn't sure he could bear to leave her again. But that was just wishful thinking. Is that why he was saying all that bump about, you know, if they had good reason to do what they did, then maybe he could let them go if he didn't catch them? Is it because he knows exactly who the culprits are, but he doesn't want to lock up the woman that he loves, the girl he fell in love with? It's kind of sweet and kind of tragic at the same time. He knew full well who was calling on him so late in the night. The door opened to a familiar face. 
Fletcher. Detective. I think we need to have a conversation about our new friend, Miss Robin. Uh, of course. Please come in. Let the game begin. And Fletcher's got something to do with it too, obviously. Ooh, part two, you say. Part two. We've got a little bit of time left. Let's have, let's have a bit of a peek at part two and see what happens. The next morning when I awoke, Jay was already clean shaven and dressed for the day. It was an interesting switch of narrative though, I have to say, when we had that flashback sequence and we had just a general narrator talking about Warren's experience and stuff like that and now boom, we're back to Robin being the narrator. That's an interesting shuffle around and you can kind of do that when you do get the games like this. It's really cool. You've got the kind of option to be a bit flexible with the writing style. Sorry, tangents, I'll stop. <laughs> you look like you slept surprisingly well for someone trying to avoid being caught for murder. He was still as tightly wound and frustrated as he had been last night. No surprises there, I suppose. Yes, well, that's probably because I'm merely an accomplice to murder. The other one with the gloves and the shifty eyes. <laughs> I suppose you think I deserve that. It seemed both of us were still sore about the argument we had the previous night. So we had a flashback to the argument. Oh, we do. Are you crazy? He clearly knows what we've done. We have to stay in the cabin now. We can't continue to give him ammunition against us. I told you, he may suspect us, but he doesn't have any proof. If he did, he'd have arrested us on the platform. He thinks Sullivan deserved what he got. He was practically inviting us to try and get away with this. He's not going to use the fact that he's recognised me. He thinks it would be cheating. He intends to play this game clean. You seem to have a lot of faith in this man you haven't seen for over 10 years. What makes you think you're so special? What? What do you mean? How could this not be special? Have you seen this? I'm not blind, Robin. He may have been speaking to the whole room, but his words were meant for you. He's infatuated with you. Jay avoided using the word love, but I knew that's what he meant. Was that what was making him so angry? How childish. He doesn't even know me anymore, Jay. And he certainly wouldn't love me if he did. So she does think that he blames her for what happened to him. I mean, it was kind of her fault, but he doesn't seem to have... He doesn't seem to hold a grudge about that particular thing. At all, actually. We've been offered a way out of this. Are you really going to let jealousy cloud your judgement? He frowned and looked away. Are you so sure you're the one seeing things clearly? Because from my perspective, you seem to have a rather rosy view of this detective. In case you need reminding, you're not the only one whose life is at stake here. For once, maybe you should think about someone other than yourself. Well, that's... I think he's got you there. I was angry, but I didn't know what to say. Yeah, yeah, he, he got her. He, he got her good. We spent the rest of the night in awkward silence, and it seemed there was no end in sight. Unless one of us apologised. Oh, no, when you've got two stubborn personalities like that who were both possibly in the wrong about different things, you know that none of them wants to be the first one to say they were wrong. No way. Oh, that's going to be a tense atmosphere, yeah, that one. I hated this. I hated the thought of being alone. Jay, I'm... Sorry. He looks as surprised as I am. You're what? Up a little bit. You turn the volume a little bit on that. Can we hear that again? Maybe a little bit louder this time. You heard me. <laughs> I thought I did, but I can't be sure. You do know what that word means, right? He was having more fun with this than I thought he would. Damn it, and that's why none of them want to be the first one to, 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 to crack. I've been doing this for quite a while now. I suppose I'm used to it. 
Perhaps things got out of hand. It was selfish to drag you along with me. And as for Ren, you're right. It's been a long time. I shouldn't assume he's the same person. But I know it's obvious he knows we were involved, but he likely figured that out when he saw you on the platform. If he wanted to, he could have just arrested us then. Do you really think he tends to just let us go? No, I can't be that easy, can it? If he's anything like the boy I remember, yes. Tell me about him. What is it that's between you? What? Why? Don't, ex don't see how we can expect to keep being companions and travelling partners and criminal masterminds together if we don't know a little bit about each other's pasts. It's private. I'm a piece in this game of yours as well. I think you owe me an explanation. It's hard to argue with that. He was a kitchen boy in my household. I'm told both his parents died and so my father took him in. We were friends. Best friends, actually. Didn't act like it, but kids be kids, I guess. I didn't know many children my own age, and most of them were children of my father's business partners. They were all horrible. Ren was different. He asked me things about myself. He played games I liked to play. He wouldn't get angry with me if I got my dress dirty, if I cried, if I said I didn't want to do something. He didn't care if I was ladylike. He smiled and laughed all the same. My favourite game was Robin Hood. I would play Robin and commit a crime in the house. Stealing was the most fun. I stole from everyone. Even my father. Yeah, we all know what happened with that, don't we? Ren was the sheriff and he had to solve the crime. Obviously he knew it was me. I was the only other person playing. So he had to have evidence. He had to prove exactly what had happened. He never beat me. We were evenly matched in everything else, but for some reason, he always lost Robin Hood. Oh, so... She's only never lost against him in games of Robin Hood, I understand. I started to feel bad. It's no fun if you always win. I made my crimes more and more obvious. But I was never once found out. Question for you, though. If they were evenly matched in other things... Maybe Ren just wanted her to feel like she was better at him than something, so he always let her win Robin Hood. Maybe he knew all of the time what had happened, but he just didn't want to see her lose. Right? Which means he'd be a lot better detective than he did. How else would he become a detective anyway? If he wasn't good at figuring this stuff out. It was like the evidence would mysteriously disappear before Ren could find it. One day I did something I shouldn't have. I took something from my father's office and gave it to Ren. When my father found out, he was furious. Also, if the evidence always disappeared before Ren could find it, that means Ren found it and was like, oh, shoot, um, okay, I need to pretend I didn't see this. Right? To punish me, he did something he'd been threatening to do for a long time. He sent Ren away. No matter how much I cried and pleaded, my father refused to tell me where he'd gone. That was the last I saw of him. Also, her dad had a good excuse to get rid of the troublesome boy that he was worried his daughter was going to end up falling in love with. Not good enough for my daughter. He had to leave because of something I'd done. I can't imagine he's forgiven me for that. Seems like he has, though. I think. I don't know. So I'm not the first person whose life you've upended. Perhaps Ren and I should start a club. The White Knights of Princess Robin. Uh, oh, okay, maybe that's one joke too far. I'm only joking. I didn't want to talk about this anymore. I need to freshen up and change. Mind giving me some privacy? I was prepared for some witty remark, but just simply nodded and made for the door. Left alone in my room, I took a moment to collect myself. Jay's right. I'm more selfish than I realised. All I do is drag people down. It's no wonder they always leave. Memories of Ren clouded my thoughts as I started getting dressed.
I really like this story, and for some reason I got super moved by that last little bit. I'm sorry, that kind of took hard. Oh, what is it with me? I'm so weepy. Ah, uh, big old man baby. Where? Okay, um... Oh man, why did that get me so much? I'm really interested to see where the story goes from here because it's obvious that Robin and Jay seem to have clicked together pretty well, right? But obviously Ren has a big thing for Robin. Robin's like, oh man, he's super cute now. Where's this going to go? I'm not even that bothered about the crime aspect of it now. I'm, the relationship aspect is intriguing me way more. Obviously, the crime aspect's still going to be investigated and looked into. And I'm sure it'll still be a big part of the story. But you know... The relationships aspect. How fun is that? I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Um, I hope you are too. Uh, if you stuck with me this far, then I assume you obviously must like something. Um, but you know, if you want to go and play this game yourself, maybe make some of the different choices to the ones I've made, or maybe you just want to, you know, zip through it quicker than I am, then uh, you can grab it. It's linked in the description below. But before you go anywhere and do anything don't forget to want the like button subscribe button and ring ling ding that notification bell if you feel so inclined to do so if you have any game recommendations for me or just want a bit of a general shit chat then you can have it in the comments below or you can catch me on my social medias oh yeah i've been mikey bly i hope you all have yourselves a fantastic morning afternoon evening or night and i will see you all next time around Bye for now.